Wow. Bob Arum, like I told you, Shakur, he was on his bicycle and he ran. He talks about Shakur's latest performance, finally gives his reaction to how it played out and says he don't know what he's going to do with him. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Well, I waited for this moment. Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum of Top Rank, he recently breaks his silence and speaks on Shakur's performance that is highly criticized and being touted as boring or, you know, unenthused, a non-energetic fight, very few punches thrown. It's just not receiving good, high praise. Bob Arum says, quote, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to look for someone to fight him, meaning Shakur. He's one of the best defensive fighters I've ever seen, but it's not a very pleasing style. He's a very good fighter, but it's not pleasing, so we will have to see. So now you know it's bad because the marketability of Shakur is now in question. Bob Arum also said post-fight that it was a stinker. That's his words exactly. He said Shakur versus De Los Santos was a stinker. And this spells some trouble for Shakur Stevenson. And I'm going to explain why. Because Shakur, he's not quite yet a 10-year pro, but he's been pro long enough. And he's an Olympian and a silver medalist. You would feel that he has worked on his style and kind of perfected his style to this point where he would be comfortable knowing exactly what he wants to be and you know what he wants to do in boxing in the ring right you look at mike tyson hi it's me mike tyson it's like cut when cut the motto he told me that i was gonna be champ i was gonna be the greatest right mike tyson from catskill brownsville brooklyn he told you what Cus told him about being a champion and he made it happen to become the youngest heavyweight champion in the world, beating Trevor Burbick at the tender age of like 20, right? Shakur is six years older at age 26. And yes, he's in a new division, but he just won a title through a vacancy in a fight that is being ridiculed and labeled as boring and not a scintillating, exciting performance. Basically a performance you would expect from someone as highly touted as Shakur Stevenson. Now, in addition to that, you have Bob Arum, who's saying the fight was basically boring. He's basically agreeing, saying it was a stinker and saying that as a fight, it didn't deliver. Now I got to figure out what I'm going to do with Shakur Stevenson and who I can get to fight him. So Shakur and I, I'm not even trying to sound harsh. I'm just being realistic, giving you my truest thoughts. Shakur has to know that this comes with the territory because he's been here before, namely in the Nakathila performance. And it looked like he started to improve his style. But as soon he was in there with an awkward puncher and a southpaw, so a guy who had some different dynamics that would create trouble, he reverted back to form, which is to not really engage, only rely on his jab, punch, count drops, not appear as confident, appear, at least to me, to be overly cautious and not really confident. Like, I watch boxing at a high level, and that's been the case for a while. I've literally watched Floyd Mayweather step to big guys with these crazy resumes and, you know, Mike Tyson type of auras in terms of power and the ability to hurt you. And he really just steps to him in the danger zone right there in the fire as if it's a person that literally can't hurt him. And it's not him being foolish and throwing caution to the wind. He's very scientific. This is what people don't understand. I don't think anyone is asking Shakur Stevenson to fight like Boo Boo the Fool and just go in there and just trade until one person gets knocked out because that would be stupid. If you have certain skill sets, you use it. The problem I think people have, namely with this performance, is it's really a two-peat. We've seen Shakur, as I mentioned earlier, in these situations where he's in there with someone that 
is not as easy to figure out. Not just some come forward brainless zombie with power, but some guy with some athleticism, a southpaw stance, some intangibles and power. And he almost doesn't know what to do. And to be a complete fighter and to be what Shakur has kind of pitched himself as, like, which is a complete fighter, you have to know how to beat all, all styles. Like, it, it's like, can you say you're a master chef if you can only cook Mexican food or you can only cook Italian food? You're not a master chef. You can cook. You can cook Italian food. But if you can only make spaghettis and lasagnas, you're not a master chef. Or we'll take it to the barber industry. If you are a barber and you can only cut white people's hair, then you're not a master barber. You've perfected a way to cut Caucasian hair. But if you can't, if there's a mixed biracial kid and he got a different texture of hair, different grade of hair, or somebody who got nappy hair, or somebody who has long hair and, you know, you got to shape up around their braids or dreads or something like that, and you don't know what you're doing, then you're not a master barber. So that's what people are criticizing Shakur for because he's really said he's the best in boxing. He's the highest on the pound for pound list. He could beat Pacquiao, beat Canelo, beat Floyd, give him his toughest fight. But if that's the case, how are you going to beat Pacquiao or a Canelo and then fight an Edwin De Los Santos who has a third of the fights that they have and they are probably hitting harder and Pacquiao is even more awkward than the Edwin De Los Santos. He takes more chances and got a chin, right? How are you going to beat him? How are you going to beat him if you show up versus Edwin De Los Santos in almost a retreating fashion? And I think that's why it's the marketability has taken a nosedive. And it's bad when Bob Arum is saying it because this is his fighter. He's like, he, he's not as cutthroat as he was to Guillermo Rigondeaux because he was just fully violating Guillermo Rigondeaux saying that the networks want to throw up when I mention Rigondeaux's name. But it's not much better either. You know, he's like, I got to figure out who's going to fight this guy. It's not a pleasing style. And he's saying stuff like it was a stinker, especially when you compare it to the co-main event. Right. Which is uh, Robson Conceicao and Navarrete. And that part is true that was a better fight to the eyes to watch you know the crowd wasn't booing that fight they booed Shakur and De Los Santos literally almost every 12 rounds and I see a lot of people saying oh ego why are you not blaming Edwin De Los Santos he's the b-side he's the guy who's considered less skillful it's his positioning to push the fight and make the fight but if somebody's in retreat mode and just like moving a lot, it's going to be hard for anybody to cut the ring. If like Shakur was really kind of galloping and taking large chunks of real estate, it's going to be hard for anybody to corner that. And he was firing off a jab, longer arms, stuff like that. So that's why he's not getting the brunt of it. He, he doesn't really have the expectation. He's not a silver medalist or whatever that everybody was watching, has been watching. He's not the one saying Frank Martin, Devin Haney, you're scared. And you know what I mean? So it kind of comes with the territory that a side is going to probably receive the brunt of, of the the criticism because Shakur, I think the expectation was there for him. People didn't know exactly how Edwin De Los Santos would would perform. And frankly, if you hadn't really seen Edwin De Los Santos, he didn't do half bad because he clearly made somewhat of a puzzle he wasn't just recklessly coming in so if anything edwin's he might have made you respect him more like okay he's not just a sloppy messy come forward guy you know what i mean so that's why i think shakur has taken more criticism gonna be very interesting to see who shakur is matched with next i really think to put this to bed he needs to do a rematch and prove that you're sick or your hand hurts or your shoulder or whatever but i doubt that that's the case and instead, they'll probably put him in with a Yoshino, somebody with marginal power or whatever. The other bad thing in closing for Shakur is the mere fact that Shakur Stevenson is, I believe, a free agent. And that was his last fight with top rank. If you're entering free agency, you don't really want to enter winning a title in that fashion. And then everybody's like downing your performance. That's not how you want to enter the free agency market. You know, it would be like, you want to enter on like a positive note. Let me know how I did in this video. 
Subscribe to my channel, it's free. Best in the business in a month. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.